Neither of us are mothers. <laughs> no, luckily for our unborn kids. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of us are mothers. Um, I have to say one of the things that I'm always thinking about when I think about the prospect of having kids or not having kids is for me the career thing is a big thing and mm. um you know uh one thing i've always thought about is i feel like i'm at the point where i am finally hitting the stride you know with career and yeah. for me my what my work and my career i put i pour a lot of myself into it you know like spiritually emotionally yeah. physically mentally geographically like yeah. uh, you know I, a lot of me goes into it and to think about um undoing some of those stitches yeah or like unknitting that scarf i've been knitting for like yeah. you know uh, like 13 years 14 years whatever is uh is uh is a scary thing and that's yeah. one of the primary things that's on my mind when i think about kids versus not ki- not having kids yeah, I, I mean, I I don't think I want to be a mother because I was a kid once, and <laughs> what an asshole! <laughs> what an incredible little asshole! Yeah, um, you know, and I mean, it is laborious. I think I've been <laughs> like, like uh, you know, and I I sort of judge uh, my ability to be a mother by the kind of child I am to my mother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I would say, I would say, I mean, there's a lot. There's gonna be a lot of strife. Uh, and that kid is going to either come out like incredibly fucked up or incredibly hilarious. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think I have, I mean, I still consider myself a child and I'm in a, I'm unfortunately in a profession and a job that rewards, you know, like be uh, like, you know, like think like a child and be playful and yeah. stuff like that. And so I don't know. And, and with the way the conversations we have around motherhood yeah. are always these incredibly serious, like there's hardly any like, uh, uh, conversation around motherhood that's playful and um, f- uh, and sli- and even slightly irre- irreverent. Yeah, there's hardly any of that. Everything is oh my god, goddess, she yeah. gave birth. Deified. <laughs> huh. Or like you know, poor thing, she gave birth. Over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want your pity, and I don't want your idolizing. Yeah. Um, so I've shut my factory for a bit. <laughs> my production unit, uh, the a bit is close temporary for business. closed. Yeah, it's closed for business. I yeah. and you know I I'm, and I'm a freelancer, so I can I mean I can imagine I mean a freelancer you just kind of choose your own life. Yeah. Uh, but I can't imagine the pressure that women who are working in corporate and I mean mostly patriarchal structures, mm. uh, how they are treated uh, when it comes to having a baby, and I mean we hardly see any pregnant women around yeah i think that's um, a big thing right nah? it's just seeing pregnant women in the workplace yeah there's this social need to protect women who are pregnant which is understandable yeah right like obviously that's very understandable um but i think also a lot of times there's women who are working who are also pregnant and the important thing is that they do want to pursue opportunities yeah. they do want to continue to be as ambitious as they ever have been doesn't yeah. mean that um, obviously they're going to take the maternity time as they like. They're going to do make the choices that they need to make for themselves and their family. But I think one thing we need to start to look at is like, um, I don't think you have to dial down your ambition. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, or stop raising your hand. Yeah. You know, because you have this next stage of life coming up. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. It gets dangerous when that the it, when it, you know, when it becomes protection, paternalistic protectionism. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, you have a baby in your uterus, not a different ambition in your head. You yeah. Know? Um, and you essentially, I mean, your education doesn't disappear the moment you get pregnant. You know, your experience doesn't disappear the moment you get pregnant. And in India, we have... Uh, from what I understand, we have the converse burden of one producing the child and then raising the child uh, almost always falls uh, on the woman. And this is in any country. Yeah. The, the, the woman ends up doing the majority of the caregiving for children. Um, one of the, the policies that's in place here that is made with great intention is the Maternity Benefit Act, which is that yeah. in private companies, you have to have six months of paid maternity leave, which is your right. That's an excellent policy. But the burden for paying for that policy falls on the employer. 
So in some ways that disincentivizes employers from yeah hiring from hiring women. women and asking slyly then like so how's the so, husband like yeah. but a pretty girl like you not married come on <laughs> i'm sure you've got someone in mind who you're going to get married to within the next 6 months one year <laughs> two months <laughs> by that uh, sort of merit what is there a paternity leave policy in india there uh-huh. is 15 days of optional paternity leave in the government sector so you have okay. an optional 15 days that fathers can take within 6 months of the baby being born and if you don't take it in 6 months it it lapses you can take it at they can take it at any point uh, uh but there is no paternity leave uh law in the private sector as ashwini deshpande i think one of the uh, economists who was talking to us she said that um women sort of tend to bear the load and and just culturally tend to bear the load of child rearing mm-hmm. so much more and it's almost looked down upon uh you know men who are over involved in their child's lives mm. so that you know even if he looks in the child's direction they're like this man <laughs> you know is he the father of the nation should we replace gandhi <laughs> with this guy for looking affectionately at his own child like <laughs> and and so uh, i mean it's it's so loaded in india and Uh, especially with no paternity leave whatsoever the situation must be very complicated yeah and i think when we think about things it's always good to think about the fact that these are roles that are socialized and that's in uh, again in every country like yeah. well in my where i grew up in the states that was yeah. definitely 100% the case you know that that where both men and women were both socialized into this system right like we are these roles are given um and i suppose we can all look to sweden as an example of how you could somehow create <laughs> the utopian some neutral, <laughs> you know sort of neutral playing field on this friend but i think for the rest of the world this is uh, something that everybody's struggling with figuring out we today we have a guest who's going to talk to us about motherhood um and also uh being a mom who is working all the way through um looking at being uh, both through pregnancy and then also continuing coming back to work after having her baby. Yeah. She's also a very dear friend of mine. Uh, oh, you stop it, yo. Yeah. Listen, this this podcast is a collection of Christina's friends. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just tell you, if they don't come in as friends, they leave as friends. Uh, we're going to be talking to Mahima Kal, who is the head of public policy for Twitter and also a mom of one. and uh, a dog is oh, sorry, okay, I, this is not relevant <laughs> <laughs> you're like a mom of one and a dog what <laughs> a dog one dog what's going on so you definitely had perhaps a pretty public pregnancy i did indeed <laughs> <laughs> was not expecting that <laughs> not expecting that so tell me um uh first how long let's just start at the beginning how, how long, long is the pregnancy so christina about 9 months is <laughs> no tell us about the time the conception <laughs> sorry that is messed up how, that is wrong how are babies made <laughs> no but i you know when mommy and daddy love each other very very much <laughs> there was that picture of you with the twitter team behind you and you looking more pregnant then uh, I, i don't even have an analogy for it you look like you were carrying a matka under your dress <laughs> and there's a picture of you and you're sort of looking you know far away what was that picture about can you give us the context behind that picture i'll give you the context so we were basically uh, going for a parliamentary committee meeting oh, and is that i a was thing you just casually slip into conversation <laughs> i mean <laughs> Is that what happened? Now it is. Now it is. Oh, nice. But we were basically going for this meeting where there was press, media present, right? And they were really interested in like what Twitter is doing, and you know, basically the story of the day. And what so, what was the story of the nah, day? I won't get into that. But there was a big story. Of the, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, you're it, saying just put it, Twitter search it. That's Twitter what she meant. <laughs> okay. So there's this, you know, big story, public interest, this kind of thing happening, and so we were there to meet to have this meeting. and a bunch of journalists were basically trying to get visuals of like the twitter team like behind the scenes waiting whatever it was and i think in those pictures like you know i was like 7 months pregnant i want to say or like that whatever so this is the time when the belly starts it got worse in the ninth month like if you think that was bad like you should have seen me a few months but it was like it was obviously highly visible and so when the pictures like kind of made their way to social media i was i found myself in a really interesting position where like people were talking about 
a pregnant woman at work yeah. like forget the you know forget the uh, the exact circumstances but like there which was a conversation yeah which you can google but there was a conversation about like seeing a pregnant woman at work and nobody actually asked me of course like no not a single person tweeted me to ask me my opinion on what <sighs> So some people thought like, oh, they've taken her out of maternity leave for this meeting, which I was like, you need to kind of have the baby to be on maternity, <laughs> maternity leave, but like, all right. <laughs> but also, you know, some people like, oh my god, like they made her wait, or like you know, she was standing, and I'm like, that's like that's my job. Like I've like I've shown up for work. Like it's it's okay to be pregnant and working. And so I found that there were some women who replied back and were like. That's fine. Like I went to office and I was pregnant. Like it's yeah. not a big deal. And then there were like a lot of people who were. Actually, quite surprised that oh she's pregnant and like poor thing like yeah. how is she need to like do regular things and <laughs> that's also when I realized that I think over here like we have a very different view of pregnancy. I think the yeah. woman just becomes this special. The, you're you're a know? goddess now in the moment yeah. that you're carrying another Indian in your belly. <laughs> like <laughs> and you know eat what you want and like put your feet up and yeah, you're to yeah. be spoiled and all that. But yeah, but it did like it did end up like that picture of me like you know. pregnant like going for like a important meeting like it sparked off a debate on twitter which actually revealed a lot about how people view pregnancy and i think how perhaps we are not that used to seeing pregnant women in work settings that's that's really what i got out of it that like is this unusual like okay do we have like institutional memories of seeing other women with bellies like going for meetings being on panels like maybe not a lot like no right no Not a whole lot, and actually, that's what was so dazzling about that image. And of course, it had the added onus of you, you know, you being the poor pregnant woman who's being made to wait by this evil politician. Um, I Which remember was not tweeting, true. Like we had, like you know, huh. jalebis together. Like it was really not the, you know, <laughs> post post all this. It was fine. Like it was all fine. But yeah, the way people sort of approached it from the outside was. Uh, you know a little bit top down trying to protect me you know yeah. or then saying of course like that we're using it to you know seem sympathetic and it was i had just showed up for a average day at work so. sympathetic to you specifically or what a mastermind do, that probably has more to do with the incident in question so you have to google that ah <laughs> god damn what was your takeaway from this i mean for the, i think for the first time you were sort of the subject as opposed to i mean yeah. you were the object that was being yeah it's true i'm like way behind the scenes in in that sense my takeaway from that was really like show off your belly a little more i think people need to see the pregnant women show up at work and it's a choice i mean some people can take it off but like my choice was to keep working and i think that like maybe in my own little way i can make it a little more obvious so like if you see that picture like oh boy my mom was like i think you need to tone it down like that belly is out there <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> like your kids are entering the room but, before but that's what i felt i felt like my little contribution should be that like let me look pregnant and let me be in a workplace situation and if somebody else is wondering or somebody else is fighting a fight you know where the husband or somebody is saying to them they're like oh now you take it easy they can be like you know what there's i saw a picture somebody else is doing it so why can't i do it like if that's the way they want to go like at least they've got one person they can you know, point to i do a lot of cinematography right i do a lot of and and when i've seen i've always thought oh man you know when i'm pregnant i'm sure i can't do this but there's a lot of women dops that post photos of them do like out on shoots and definitely where you were yeah. right like 7 months pregnant and just for me being able to see that that happens it is revolutionary you know just being able to see that yeah. image so i think what you're doing is really important yeah i mean it felt it to me it felt like the thing to do like when i saw that conversation and i saw people were confused about how i could be at work because i was pregnant or like why i should not be at work because they were being protective maybe yeah that's when i realized i was like okay you know what no hiding the bump <laughs> you know it's crazy you know. actually i think it's the intersection of you as a woman human uh, uh at the intersection of being an economic agent as well as a reproductive agent We don't know whether to like protect you or ask you to pay your taxes. That's what's so <laughs> confusing in that one moment. Yeah. And I think it is a, it is a new dynamic. I mean, if you look at like women in the workplace, right? If you look at I think like people 
you know, in Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In, like one of the things that she says, which I read like a couple of years ago, but it made sense was that a lot of people check out before they check out or a lot of women, like you're anticipating that you'll get pregnant in the future. So you won't take a promotion. You're anticipating that maybe like you're not even pregnant right now, but you're already dialing back because your assumption is that you won't be able to do certain things. Yeah. And I think somewhere like that point, which I've read like in her book, but also in other places was there in my mind. And so I think that's what I was also reacting to that. Like, let me not presume that I can't do anything and I took the same attitude to when I returned back to work which was about two months ago right like mm-hmm. uh, did like let me not just because I'm a new mom doesn't mean that I can't operate at almost the same level I wouldn't say the same but like almost the same level of efficiency as now who is someone who has just returned in the workforce into the workforce uh, after a maternity break what are three questions that any woman who is entering the workforce after a maternity break, what are the three questions she should ask her employer? Yeah, I think before you leave, you need to have a very good assessment of, uh, you know, your job security and how they're going to cover your job when you're gone. I, I find that a lot of people are very insecure. I think one is like you should firstly make sure that you are you have your legal rights. So the company is going to give you those six months off. You are going to be paid. You know, it's not, they're not going to scrimp on, you know, paying you your full salary. I think that financial security was the biggest thing to me. Like I was able to like, you know, save money while I was pregnant. I, well, when I was on maternity leave, save money, but also splurge, right? I yeah. was like, oh my God, I want this like alien looking chair for my baby. Like, you know, which like rocks her and like, I don't have to get up. Like, fine, I bought it. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know? I think the second thing is that you need to find out what other benefits you get as a parent. So, Ooh. for example, if the company has like... Um, a minimum number of parents or you know people with children they might provide you a crash right like a daycare thing but that's not a common thing like that's not something that's maybe been like mainstreamed so you can find out from your company can they like if you are looking at daycare like if you've got older kids or whatever it might be you should find out whether they can like approach a big company and get a discount for example you know so that you are like as a parent like it's just that little bit easier for you I think the third thing maybe this is to ask your colleagues is you know there's a lot of social pressure to be at work engagements yeah like one is you show up for work to do your work but the second is like you got to show up to post work yeah stuff. otherwise yeah. people are going to yeah. be like well I guess her, yeah her head's not in it her heart's not in it yeah. and I think that you need to like clarify that for yourself and I think you need to clarify that for your team that you may not be there 100% for some of this stuff but it doesn't mean that you're checked out it just means that you have a second priority so I think the things that you can start thinking about like you know when you get pregnant um, and but you should have the conversation the one thing I've learned like through my years of working is that like the worst you can get is a no but it never costs you anything to ask and so like I always now like I just ask I'm like can I get this? Hmm. Most of the time they say fine. So that's great. <laughs> but you are an exception though. Like that's what, I mean, you're, you're sort of, what's so cool actually, I think in, in when we when we started having this conversation, I was like, she is living the life that we should all aspire to <laughs> right now. Yeah, but I told Christina, I said, but I will be a success story in the sense like when you are talking to a woman about like returning to work or like keeping a job after a baby, like I'm definitely like, I have to admit, like, I've got the best of everything, right? Like, I'm working for a great company. They have, like, not just, like, adhering to Indian law, but they've got this global, you know, sort of outlook. And so it's very, very mom and parent-friendly, I would say. Not even mom, like, parent-friendly. So it's been, like, really easy to actually come back to work and have that community. So it's, you know, those kind of things. You're lucky. I've got a great family support. Like, I need to travel. I've got a husband who's like, listen, just go. Like, if you don't go, like, I'll kill you. Like, just go and do your thing. Like, I've got it. So... You know, luck has a big part to play in it, but but you need the infrastructure yeah. to be able to go and do these things. Speaking of your op ed in Mint, yeah, uh, in your, I mean, you discuss how it's so easy. That's like motherhood, obviously, is a big point where women drop out of the workforce. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in that article, in that op ed, you talked about some of the things you can kind of think about or put in place to not become a statistic. Yeah. What are some of those things? I think the best, uh, I mean, the example that I first uh, talked about was how my boss asked me if I want to go for this program. So they have this program at Stanford, which is for like sort of senior leaders in the company. And the first day was my first day back from maternity leave. And so he basically reached out to me and said, listen, I put your name up for this. But like, if you don't want to do it right now, like, do not worry about it. But I didn't want to presume that you will say no. So like, it's up to you, right? And I was like, oh my god like that's my first day like you know and I'd been with the baby like six months I didn't leave her like I didn't use my maternity leave as like a holiday you know like I was really with her 
so i was like i you know i really want to go like this sounds amazing right like yeah. so i'm like can i be with her like 24/7 like just us and then like the next morning i'm gone like and then like my husband was like listen you need to do this just do it the baby is really small she may or may not even realize you're there and it was really sad to see that she did not realize <laughs> like i facetimed her but what i liked was that like they should not presume that you're not interested just because like you don't fundamentally change your circumstances change and you might have to say no because of certain reasons but it doesn't mean that you had a baby it doesn't mean that your ambition is gone it doesn't mean that it could also mean that yes it has shifted i have friends yeah. who don't feel like working in the same way anymore because they want to spend time with their family and that's also perfectly legitimate way yeah. to make a decision but you shouldn't assume that that's the way the decision is going to go so i think that definitely was a big part of it like you shouldn't treat people you should treat them differently to the end that they need a little more support you know because their time yeah. is now a little bit split you know and they are responsible for another human being so yeah. You know, I always thought it would be like Stella, but um, <laughs> her dog, my dog. But it's a, well, it's similar, but it's yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the point of view of an Indian woman, right? Yeah. We are taught. I mean, first of all, they're letting us work. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not even that we got this job out of like this is just letting us work, and then. There's this overwhelming sense of gratefulness towards the organization that you're in. So there's almost this incredible hesitation to ask for these things. Yeah. Um. What What advice would you have for you know? I mean, so my brother gave me advice once. Uh, I think early last year. So things were a little bit. Anyway, so he gives me this advice. He's an investment banker, and in two thousand and eight, they started cutting people for the sake of cutting people at some point, right? Because they, you know, the banks were in a lot of trouble, and so you know, you cut the people who aren't performing first or the low performers. But at some point, you're just cutting people because you need to get your finances in order. And so that experience kind of shaped his outlook. I think a little bit towards how to look at the work-life balance. And he told me he was like, listen. Ultimately it's a job you know i mean you might feel very passionate about it but ultimately it's a job and tomorrow if like a twitter or a facebook or wherever you might be working needs to like you know downsize the india office for a business reason no one is going to make the decision not to because they really really like you like you're so nice like it's a business decision right so at the end of the day like you also need to make decisions for yourself like do right by your company and do right by your job and be a high performer because you know that's that's what you want to be but at the end of the day like make a sensible decision like it is still work and so if you approach it like that i think that you don't feel so grateful yeah. like you feel you know i feel very lucky working where i am because we have a beautiful company culture but at the end of the day like i work really hard i work all yeah. day like i work you know at nights i'm available to people at weekends i have to deal with people like when they are upset about stuff which is not even my fault but i'm like still talking them through it so i know that i give a lot of my you know my time and my emotional time so it's to be more aware that yes the company is doing right by you but you are also doing right by the company and so yeah. don't be afraid to ask like it's you know the worst you will hear is a no the worst you will hear is a no <laughs> you've been interacting you've been in a position where you've been a uh, younger woman yeah. in many rooms where there's senior people for a long time yeah one of my favorite sort of pull strategies from this that i've ever heard is gunid mongra who basically dyed her hair gray in her 20s so that yeah so that Hilarious. when yeah so that when she went into these rooms yeah people just thought she was older yeah. right and would be taken more seriously and that was her strategy for navigating work you know did you i had so many problems because firstly i think i look youngish and which is a blessing in the i mean it, it's, it's in the outside right. world it's a blessing yeah. yeah i think like now i feel like i look my age but definitely you know i don't dress like i dress that jeans and you know so like i think a lot of times like i walked in and people and i always had to meet like fairly senior people even in my last job and also the twitter job so it would like put me face to face now when you're a journalist it's fine like you know i mean obviously unless they're waiting for a senior journalist to come and do some yeah. grand interview like it's okay it was never really that much of a problem but like certainly when i was representing institutions they would almost feel like oh they haven't sent me the senior person like is this an insult to me that they sent me the junior person <laughs> oh. because that's what the receiver is like thinking right like why would they have a problem with a young person in front of them because i feel sometimes they feel that the stature doesn't match like i deserve somebody more senior in my presence and so one of the stories uh, that i can share which you know it was very upsetting to me actually was when i was working with this organization where we were going to launch it was to do with twitter we were going to launch something right so i was like working with them on it and uh, and we were at that point uh, and at the launch day there were going to be some like very senior gray head uh, people over there <laughs> 
and so the guy called me and he said so who's going to be there from you know your side and i was like i'll be there and he was like you'll be there so i said that well i'm the person like i handle public policy for twitter in india and the, you're like, the head of public policy yeah i'm the head of public policy and uh, yeah maybe the i should the black said that. head yeah. head of <laughs> twitter policy and this guy basically was basically told me that is there anybody else in your like i know you're the right person for the job and i know obviously this is your responsibility but is there anybody older the office that you can send or somebody with gray hair because like that would be a little more appropriate because we're bringing like a senior person and i felt like really you know i was like firstly there is nobody like that in our office like our ceo is like in his mid 40s like we just don't have like you know people of that vintage not really but also like i felt like i have to do this like you know i just felt like i didn't feel very confident about it and so i said let me you know let me find out let me think about it and i was in i went to jaipur that weekend i think the litfest was on so i was there and i was sort of you know i was in one of the sessions is sort of standing and i don't know like from feeling really like you know they're cornered and feeling really upset about it and almost like asking one of my male colleagues to listen can you go instead like i you know and who's my age but like you know maybe they won't have a problem with that something just snapped in me right and i was like what the hell like you know i worked really hard and why should i take this so i called up you know somebody else in the organization who's senior and i sort of said to them that you know this is the conversation that we've had and i'm you know i'm a little confused i said because you know it is really my job to do this and you know they are you know they've told me that they need someone senior and i i, I don't understand the message i'm receiving because you know first you know you want women in the workplace and then when there are women in the workplace you don't want like i i haven't understood the person on the other so i said something on those lines like i wanted to be really polite about it because i wasn't like i didn't want to like shout about it but i definitely wanted to make my point across the person on the other end of the line got it immediately and was like that conversation should have never happened of course you're the person we understand these new companies have like young teams yeah. you know and if we don't understand it we should understand it that's the way you guys hire it's a bunch of young people yeah. working on a new social media company and like you definitely need to be there and so i was there And so, like you know, I mean, it, it was. It, I, I, I've seen that picture as well. It's just <laughs> you with a bunch of white-haired dudes, just the youngest, and just all your dad's age around you. Pretty like. much, yeah. Like my dad's friends love me. They have so much to talk to me about. But but really, I've been through that in various. Like this is one of the most pronounced ones where the people I was dealing with were like fairly well established. But you know, like you you feel almost like they're right. You know, like initial yeah. your initial reaction is like you you're like Shh, I guess this is not my chance, like this is not my opportunity. I guess I need to. I asked somebody in my company who was like my age, literally, you know, but he was a guy, and I thought maybe I should ask him. And it's I'm just lucky that something snapped in me, and I was like, why the hell am I doing this? Like this is I have put this together. This is my job. This is what my boss requires me to do. I think they feel like they need. an older presence to justify their presence in the room. Yeah. And you have to kind of tell people that one I'm not as young I think as you think I am. Uh maybe becoming a mom will be helpful cuz I'm like I'm a mother. <laughs> <laughs> But the other is that, like this is my job. This is who yeah. you get. Yeah. So like this I'm is I'm the it. person with you the knowledge do it, and the qualifications. Yeah, if you want to do it like you talk to me otherwise I guess we're not having this meeting like and do it in the style that suits you but like you have to like somehow build other confidence and i think that can be i mean that's applicable to young women that's applicable to all kinds of people who don't look like the person that they want to see yeah like someone else thinks that they need to see sitting on a panel so i think yeah. that's your advice actually to someone in that situation applies to folks in many different you from know, many different intersections you have to do it if you want to actually like you know if you want that change to happen like it's you know it's just something that you got to start standing up for yourself and you got to start start standing up for other people yeah so then, and yeah and mahima i think that something that people can actually take away is that language you just use cuz i think sometimes people think like how do i bring this up especially to someone more senior but the language you used which was i was under the understanding that it was supposed to be this way and i suppose i'm confused as to why the message i'm receiving is this And why is that? That's like a good yeah. almost template for how to approach something like this with maybe a manager or something. Mahima, the question I have is, do you think that you being a woman and being a woman in such an incredible position of power? Yeah. Um th- does do you think that you being a woman brings anything new to the t- or brings something different to the table when it comes to Twitter? A bump. <laughs> <laughs> you know my entire team is uh 
women now like i mean when i met you i was a one person team right yeah. like i was a one man army one woman army like i've our entire team is women i think it does i think to me also because my particular brand of work at twitter has a lot to do with also the safety element it has to do with also the social element and i think you know in certain rooms yeah would they have preferred a guy to be there like maybe but i think like as a woman i would hope that it's empathy that you bring to the situation because you know like i'd speak to so many people who you know who've been like abused on social media right whether it's like sort of high level or low level whether it's an insult mm. or you know mm. really like something very very much more serious somewhere i do feel like you need to be of that world sometimes to really understand what that experience is unfortunately i've had enough of it myself i think you need to have more women in the workplace like i think it brings a different quality of conversation into the room i think we think of things that the men don't think of i think you need to have like especially with global platforms you need to hire geographically diverse people like you just need to do it like there's no way like you can be sympathetic to somebody but at the same time like you'll never have their experience right yeah. and so sometimes you just, they just need to be on the table like that's just the only way it's going to get done so that's what i think we have uh one segment at the end where we ask guests it's called do one thing mm. what is one thing that you would advise uh listeners to do one thing that i haven't already said i would say is uh keep your cvs updated i think it's very easy no i mean if you want really practical advice like i have not updated my cv in years like i don't even remember half the stuff i've done yeah like i'm just saying like even for your own record of the stuff that you've done yeah like you've probably done amazing things and you don't even realize it because you thought that was your job but yeah. if you start listing it all down like you will realize the skills you've accumul- accumulated you'll realize the you know the kind of stuff you've done so i think it's really good every year or whenever you get time to actually list out what you've done and like keep it in a living document for yourself that's a really good one that's a really good one thank you mahima thank you for having me yeah <laughs> thank you so much mahima that was no incredible. that was great guys thank you yeah thank yeah, you thanks. and send tweet women in labor is made by christina mcgilvery laura quinn aditi mittal Manya Sachdeva, Sonakshi Chowdhury, Nandita Gupta, Sonali Thakkar, Ipti Patnaik, Rose Higgins, Porva Jassy, Regina Hawkins, Kashish Sethi, and Priyanka Verma. This podcast is generously supported by a grant from the American Center New Delhi. The opinions, findings, and conclusions stated are those of women in labor. and do not necessarily reflect those of the United States Department of State. For more information on the podcast, visit womeninlabor.com or search Women in Labor on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Music